So what I'm doing now is training the next generation of outstanding teachers, which is great fun. I'm working at the University of Roehampton, um, looking after ICT education for pretty much 1,100 or so people training to be primary school teachers at any one time, most of whom the ICT that we do is the sort of general ICT as a tool for learning and teaching, ICT across the curriculum. We're now sort of weaving in little bits of coding, little bits of programming into those courses too. So everybody has to at some point sit through me or one of my colleagues explaining about Scratch and we sort of get about 10 minutes, give or take, for this is what Scratch is, now go and have a go at this. And the thing which we do um, is, well, certainly with those who are training to be key stage one early years teachers, is the sort of animation thing, telling a joke inside Scratch. And I'll show you one of those in a moment. Um, and then in key stage two, we sort of do a very, very simple you know, game navigating something around the screen. And the feedback on this is, on the whole, so very, very positive. They get really excited about, you know, having a go at controlling a computer and writing these programs. And then we get students to go out and have a go with this out on placement. And these aren't our ICT specialists. We do, however, have about 20 or so ICT specialists a year, which is brilliant, and we get to do really interesting things with those. So our first year students, we've got this lovely creativity and computing module, and I'm, I'm toying with the notion of doing this as a MOOC, a massively open online course for next year, and saying, look, anybody wants to come and have a go at this sort of creativity computing thing, we've got a course which our students are going to have to sit through. So if ever, anybody else is interested, come and have a look. So one of the things which we do is look at ways of, of integrating Scratch into other bits of the curriculum, too. I was sent an email that kind of shows up, doesn't it, um, saying, look, I'm writing this book for a very brilliant educational publisher, and we want to include something about Scratch in it. Can you think of, say, half a dozen ways of using Scratch across the curriculum? And here was my list of, I think there's 14 things up on there. So... I want to sort of show you a few of those examples. Now, who here has not seen Scratch before? Oh, you're in for a treat this Well, I'd say you're in for a treat, apart from the fact it's me presenting this evening. But Scratch is so, so, so nice. It really is a lovely way into programming for very young children and you know, slightly older children too. So our first year undergraduates have never done any programming before. Many of them get into, you know, having a go at writing some code through Scratch. Um, in school... A few of us are becoming a little worried that Scratch becomes the new PowerPoint or the new Excel. And I have no doubt that it's possible to teach Scratch in at least as bad a way as it's always been possible to teach Excel. There are better ways of doing these things. And so, yes, you've got a lovely, lovely tool out there, but let's start a thinking of some really creative ways of using this. And you know, the kind of thing which everybody does is the stuff I've just described to you. Let's do the animation. Let's do the game. Are there other interesting things you can do with Scratch as well? And so this was my list in response to a friend's query. Leon, am I staying sufficiently in shot for you to cope? Okay, so turtle graphics stuff, the stuff which we used to do with Logo. Anybody who's familiar with the old QCA schemas of work will recognize crystal flowers in there. Click on the green flag to start. And we have the turtle. It's drawing, hex what is it? it's drawing hexagons there. It's drawing five of them in a row. We've got a few sliders in here so we can change these numbers, change the step size, change the size of the thing. Let's have another go. Whoa, that's going to take forever. That was a really bad example, wasn't it? Um, take the number of sides down. Let's try that. Oh, that's a bit boring. Number of petals, 16. So you get the sort of idea. How is this coded up? It's really simple, isn't it? So we'll just return to that there. Very, very simple. We've got a few variables just to set all of those things up, and then we just repeat through the loop drawing the shape, and then moving on a bit, drawing another shape. So all of that sort of logo stuff that you used to do in primary education, we can do that in Scratch perfectly well. Anybody here like Bridget Riley's art? Anybody familiar? Kindred spirits, two of you at least. Bridget Riley, we've, our pals have crossed at various points. It turns out that my father-in-law used to print her catalogues once upon a time and used to sort of have to phone Bridget Riley up and say, which way round is this one? And she'd say... I don't know, I'll have to go and check. Anyhow, so inspired by early Bridget Riley, what, what have we got here? We're using Scratch's stamp tool, looking at this overlap between computing and art. If you're interested in that sort of computational art, there's a lovely sort of logo-style art package out there. But you can do all of this in Scratch too. So very, very simply, 
you know, we've got here a shape which then stamps itself all across the screen. The lovely thing about Scratch, of course, is that you can change these thing, things. So instead of turning through half a degree at a time, let's turn through three degrees. Instead of changing the color by 0.5 color units, don't know what it's measured in, let's do three units. Let's have a look what else we can do in here. Change something else. Change, oh, should we do a, should we do sort of, Whirl by 25. 25 looks a bit high as a number. Let's see what that does. Isn't that gorgeous? You know, just playing around with the parameters there. You know, change that initial starting shape. Um, let's go and have a go at that. Edit that. Let's just rub some of that out. Rub some of this out. This sort of tinkering attitude is one of the lovely things that Scratch encourages. I don't know, Michael, do you see problems with that sort of tinker around, tweak things, see what happens. I see this as you know, the way a lot of us learn this stuff, by just playing with the toys here. You know, what do you think? Okay, it's not quite Bridget Riley, is it? I think she'll be safe for a little while longer yet. Alan, you'll tell me to shut up when people get bored, won't you? All right, safe current practice. No, no, thank you. Right, if you go on to the internet thingy and say, you know, how can we use computers for maths education? You'll get page upon page upon page of websites which kind of say, I'm going to ask you a multiplication question. If you get the answer right, then I'm going to ask you another multiplication question. If you get the answer wrong, I'm going to ask you the same multiplication question. And it gets so boring, this sort of um, Skinner-esque, you know, biscuit type approach to maths education. You can do exactly the same sort of thing in Scratch if you would want to. Well, would you want to? Yes, because there's much more fun writing a program to teach somebody or to test somebody about arithmetic than there ever is in doing an arithmetic thing. Let's put it into display mode. Um, I'd like answers called out, please. Four fives. Okay, it's a tough crowd tonight. Twelve. Okay, two fives. Ten. And so on. You get the idea. Okay, nobody made any mistakes so far. Um, what would have happened if we didn't? And again, a really easy thing to code up. This is one of the introductory things which we do with our first-year undergraduates doing this creative computing thing. The feedback when you get it wrong. Let's have another go at that, shall we? What is two times one? I'm not sure about this. This isn't going out on the live stream, is it? OK, so this one just says no in a very direct sort of way. There are arguments for doing much more interesting feedback. Here is a report written by Seymour Papert back in 1971, of all things. Somewhere in here he's talking about exactly the same sort of idea as I've just shown you. Oh, here it is. Incidentally, this is surely the proper use and concept of drill and practice. Writing such a program is ideal project, the second term of an elementary school course. Said the best way to learn something to teach, better writing a teaching program is better still. Um, blah de blah de blah. Um, don't just tell him that it's the right answer if he's wrong. Give, give him some useful advice. I'm discussing what kind of advice is useful. He's deep into the understanding both the concept being taught and the process of teaching and learning. Um, what else have we got on there? I could sh let me show you the spelling one because this is quite cool. You won't be able to hear the speakers. We've got sound. One minute. Okay. So this works with lists. Here you go. Click on the green flag. Spell summer. Did you hear it? Spell yeah, summer. summer. And I type in S U M E R. No. Okay. Spell autumn. And we have another go. And it takes that out of the list and keeps asking us the same thing. So what are the pedagogic assumptions underlying that? One minute, you say. One more thing to show you. Um, branching databases, animation. Let me show you some students' work. This is one of the outcomes from this creativity and computing course. Again, looking at how Scratch could be applied across the curriculum. So we take a work of children's literature and try and create games around that using the characters, using the situations from the books. So this isn't my work. This is two of my students. Paired programming project, lots of sort of agile development ideas coming in there. It takes a while to load. We're pushing the limits of what Scratch can do here. Here we go. Click on the green flag to start. We've got music, which I think they compose themselves. And we have a lovely little... Hungry Caterpillar. Now, we're conscious that Eric Carle is litigious, but there is an exception in the Copyright Act for exam work. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Isn't it the gorgeous? Moon, a little egg lay on the leaf. 
magical storytelling. Absolutely. <laughs> on Sunday morning, the warm sun came up. Come on. And then we have this idea of semiotic domain principles. We're not sure what this is, but it looks like something interesting to explore. Alan is going to throw a camel at me at this point. So I'm going to say thank you very much for your patience this evening. Thank you.